they're more likely to have problems than babies above 34 weeks. But those babies are still at risk. They're still not completely okay. So yeah. they're, they're still an at-risk population. I mean, I, I can imagine that raising a premature baby must be a very s stressful experience for parents. You know, what, what do parents go through? Well, I think there's a lot of emotional stress because your baby lies in hospital for approximately the time that the baby would have been in the womb. Yeah. So if your baby is two months premature, you have the baby in hospital for two months. And I think that's very stressful. And then the baby's very tiny, so you've got a challenge of trying to accommodate it with clothing and it lies in a frog-like position, so it's difficult to get nappies to fit it. So it's nice to have a preterm nappy, something like the one from Huggies. Um, it's important to breastfeed your baby, but establishing breastfeeding is quite difficult, with, you know, with a baby yeah. being in hospital. And, and you having to go and home and yes. come back and expressing milk and the stress that's associated with it. I mean, it's a very difficult time for parents, it really is. Do, do, they, do they need special care? Because as you say, um, preterm babies obviously staying in hospital for um, two months or however long. Uh, they are prematurely born. After they come home, however, um, do you find that there's, there's, there's more work needed on, on, a, on a baby like that? Well, I think parents tend to be more worried about the baby because the baby's been ill and I think you're, you're sensitized. So I think parents are more anxious about those children. But it's really, really important that the children are immunized. Um, there tends to be a, a delay in immunizing preterm babies. People don't want to immunize preterm babies, but it's really important that they are immunized at the chronological age. So in other words, if the baby's one month old and he needs an immunization, he needs to get it at that age. Mm. Not, not when he weighs three kilos, as some people tend yeah. to do. That's, I'm, I'm glad you brought up that point because you speak to a lot of parents and you know, they, they almost age their child according to... How do you age a premature child? Do you age them when, according to when they are born or according to when they should have been born? Well, that depends. From our purposes, we correct the age for the degree of prematurity, which confuses some parents. But it's not really fair to compare a 700 gram prem with a 4 kilogram term baby. So yeah. we allow that degree of prematurity. So we'll subtract when the baby was supposed to be born from their age when we're looking at development and growth. But after that, it's just the ordinary chronological age. Of course, yeah. I mean, it would be as, yeah. as soon as they get out of that, the, the, the very small stages of life and they become stronger and are able to, I suppose, fight more for themselves in life. Um, uh, prematurity, as I said in the introduction, is the, is, is the leading cause of newborn deaths. Um, and now the second leading cause of death after pneumonia in children under five. Why? Why, why is this? Just because they're so fragile. Um, if you're born immature, everything's immature. So your lungs, your kidneys, your heart, your brain, everything is, is immature. And, and the little babies are very, very prone to problems. So right at birth, they're prone to um, respiratory distress syndrome, which means that they land up in trouble and, and can't breathe properly. And then they're very prone to infection. So it's really important that we are careful with infection. And what we found in our unit is that... Um, less invasive care, so less invasive ventilation, um, where we use nasal CPAP instead of intubating the child to ventilate. Yeah. And giving them something called surfactant has made a big difference to the hyaline membrane, the respiratory distress syndrome. And then kangaroo mother care is, is really fantastic because it addresses a lot of those issues that we were talking about, you know, the mother's anxiety and being separated from her baby. Here we are getting the mom to be the incubator, if you want to put it that way. So skin-to-skin yeah. -skin contact between the mother and the baby, and the mother stays in hospital for 24 hours a day and is the caregiver for her baby. Yeah. So that makes the bonding and everything much better and also it helps improve the outcome. They go home earlier, they survive better. Oh, really? So we That's are so looking at KMC, kangaroo care. That's so interesting. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm looking at these photographs and I'm... I'm just going weak looking at these little babies. Um, what, what, what are the chances though? I mean, does it all matter? Um, and this is the reality, if, that if you've got the correct medical care and you give birth to a prem baby, chances of survival are higher. Is, is that? Not that really. Not really. Um, because at, at a certain gestational age, it doesn't matter where you are, you're not going to survive. So at about 22, 23 weeks, your chances of survival are, are not great because there isn't really enough lung available. And we do pretty well in the state sector. Our survival rates are comparable um, to international units. And um, unfortunately, it depends less on your uh, socioeconomic status than yeah. on how premature you're born. So the more premature you are born, the, mm. the, the worse your chances, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. So how, how about, um, is, is there anything that a parent can do should do to try and 
prevent having a premature baby? I'm going into labor early. Well, prematurity is very difficult to prevent. They've tried hard in, in first world countries and it's really hard to prevent. But if you're pregnant, you must attend antenatal care. If you even think you're going into labor, you must seek help. And antenatal steroids, so getting steroid to the mother, really does improve the outcome of the baby. Okay. And then breastfeeding, breastfeeding, and breastfeeding, and kangaroo care are the things that the mothers can do. Yeah. Breastfeeding really improves the outcome of babies. It prevents a lot of the nasty complications of prematurity. All right, so Sunday the 17th of November is World Prematurity Day. Um, it's a day which aims to raise awareness around the issue of premature births around the world. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for chatting to us about premature babies and, uh, and uh, those uh, 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 things associated with them. Professor Dania Ballard is the Associate Professor of Pediatric and uh, Child Health at WITS.